So the planet filter, the planet filter, what a soul would know about that when we're out in consciousness and we have, you know, no rhyme or reason. We just move where we want to move. We can see how a planet plants itself, it sets itself in relationship to other planets and to other uh, cosmic beings. And it starts its orbit and it moves around its orbit. And it continues in that rotation. <laughs> and unless a meteor hits it and knocks it off track or the sun starts to move and, you know, makes it a little wobbly, like that planet is going to go in that same orbit and rotation until something massive happens or it decides that it's done existing, right? Like the planet will not budge. It is following that rotation. And it's also solid, right? And it holds, like, such richness and diversity. Each planet has its own um, environment, its own atmosphere, its own uh, inhabitants or non, um, its own weather patterns. Like everything within the planet is so unique to that energy that's created when all of the original stars and atoms and meteors and all of that come together and form this cosmic thing called a planet. It has its own energy and the planet, um, it's solid, right? It's, it's different than the brilliant brightness of a star, which is hydrogen and helium and explosion. Um, the planet has density. And so what a soul would know as they decide to come down and inhabit this human body is we're going to inhabit the body. We're going to feel solid and planted and here. So the body is going to be, um, the voice is usually going to be gravelly and more grounded or deeper. The body itself is going to be uh, a solid body, a strong body. You know, it's not usually ethereal like a lot of the star physical bodies might look to people. And so a soul that is putting on that filter in that human body knows that they're going to, um, they're going to be uh, like present and and um, inhabited and sometimes that is a good thing sometimes they choose to drag the body around or to um, not love the body or to fight and resist the body but even that is a teaching right it's a teaching of solidness and groundedness and inhabiting your own space and so the soul knows once you choose to put on this planet filter that you're going to have patterns that are familiar and comfortable to you. And you're going to be working with, do I follow those patterns and trust them and, and follow where those patterns take me, where I'm surrendering to life, or am I going to arrive and try to control and make sure that those patterns go exactly the way that I want them to go? And so a lot of the work of a planet filter is about trusting versus controlling about surrendering versus um, trying to make things go in the way that they want it to go. And that comes from a fear of the meteor hitting the planet, right? If something would surprise the planet and bump it out of its orbit, it doesn't know how to get back into that familiar space. And so the human that is working with the soul filter is really working with um, trusting life you know, um, they've likely been betrayed in other times or early in their childhood. And so they expect that life is going to require them to have to force their own orbit, force their own way, fight their way through the system or the um, experiences that come towards them. And their intention is always, I have to get around the orbit back to the other side. I have to complete. I have to make the cycle go all the way through. And so if I don't have my controls in place and something gets off track, I'm not going to get to the place I need to get to and start this thing again. And so there's this fear of control being taken away. And that can be fear of death. It can be fear of health, fear of money, fear of jobs. Um, so they end up fostering a lot of the fears because they're trying to resist not having them happen, right? And when you resist something you don't want to have happen, that's usually what ends up happening. And so that creates a cycle that keeps reinforcing for them that life isn't really fun and it is you're going to have to work hard and you're not going to get what you want and people are going to betray you. 
So in the shadow of this uh, planet filter, you know, there's this struggle, this battle with life. And what happens as the soul filter with the planet starts to surrender a little more and give up the controls and trust a little more, what they find is they start to step into their gift. And the gift that the planet brings is this solidness, this security, this protection of all that is in its container, right? So the planet Earth, for example, Earth is so protective of all who inhabits her space. So she makes sure that there's enough food and water and that the balance of the environment is constantly supporting her inhabitants. A planet filter in their gift is that same way. They are going to protect and guard and and make sure the highest potential of all within their arms, all within their space, is expanding and in enriching life and growing. And so when the planet filter steps out of the shadow and into the gift, they have this strength and this certainty and they know which way to go and they know how we get there and they know that if we all align and we follow and we do our work and we you know, put our best foot forward and we have courage and valor, we will get there. We will make it to whatever this final destination is that the planet sees. And so they're, they're very strong um, warriors, battlers, people to take with you, you know, into um, the foray of life. And in their gifts, they will be loyal. They will stay with you and protect you and um, encourage you to keep fighting the fight in a way that is profound. So... Love me some planet filters. <laughs> they are so good. <laughs>